I guess where I'd like to start is you asked a question about what it would be like to be both a parent and a child. It also sounds like she really wasn't ready to be a mother, as you said. She was, she was maybe too young or she just hadn't uh, come to a point in her life when she was ready. Um, which sounds hard. That sounds really hard. My own relationship with my mother, she had already had two children. So it, it wasn't like she didn't know what was coming. I was her first son. So evidently at the outset, she was thrilled. I think uh, I was different, um, you know, being male. Uh, uh, evidently she said that I used to have temper tantrums that would really freak her out. Um, I wonder if that was something in the relationship because as I recall, there were times when she was available and times when she was not. I mean, um, it was one of those situations where uh, I think I had a very good relationship with her as a child. And then there were other times where I did not have a good relationship with her. I mean, it was an off and on type of thing, um, which was difficult. Uh, it, it makes me more uh, vulnerable to people's changes in mood. Hi, hubby. Um, so I just watched your video. bring their children to me and when this happens we see what we want to talk about right before our eyes the child is jumping about on the mother's knee reaching out for things on my desk climbing down onto the floor and crawling around clambering up on the chairs pulling books out of bookcases or perhaps clinging to mother in dread of the white-coated doctor who will surely be a monster who eats children One thing that I noticed right away was um, how you kind of talked about a changing relationship between your daughters as they grew older. And I think that that's something that I'm really interested in um, because of my own experiences, but also just, I mean, in general, getting older, trying to find a healthy relationship with your parents. Um, I found it interesting that when you were talking about your daughters, um, you primarily were using the past tense. Um, 
and I'm guessing maybe this is because you were talking uh, about them as they had been as young children and obviously uh, having a lifelong relationship a person changes immensely um, and as a result the relationship changes Potomoisi, toisin, autoisin, and binosin, hetera, kai hetera, hudata, epire. This means something like, over those who step into the same rivers, different and different waters flow. The idea, whatever version we accept, seems to be one that Plato ascribes to Heraclitus in his dialogue The Theaetetus. The idea would be that the entire world is constantly changing. It's like a river. From moment to moment, Everything in the world first has one property, then another property. Nothing ever stays the same, nothing is stable. The world is a world of flux. But is that really what Heraclitus meant with his river fragments? I think not, actually. I've had very interesting discussions with other people, especially um, my queer friends who have had experiences where they're not accepted by their family, and there's that instinct to reject your family. Um, and there's also a questioning of the importance of having family and having, you know, these people who are biologically related to you, who have brought you up, but have also maybe done certain things to you that are still hard to deal with. Um, so I think that right now there's this real debate in my head of whether I want to make the effort to have a relationship with my parents or if I don't. His brotherhood became increasingly successful. The Brotherhood lived by way of a common law of property, share and share alike. They owned nothing and everything. It isn't difficult to see the clear similarities between this and the general idea behind communism, Marxism, the hippie commune, the kibbutz, and others too numerous to mention. Pythagoras was the pioneer. If you ever have kids, you'll see. I mean, so much depends on what the kid is like. I mean, no kid comes with a manual, obviously. He's also becoming very well known in the West for his ideas on the imagination, the imaginative world, which is between the abstract intellectual world and how those ideas, if you like, come into manifestation in the sensible world. So between the abstract spiritual intellectual and the world of the senses. He talks a lot about this world of imagination between the two. Today we're going to chat about introducing and using a transitional object, a lovey. These were huge in our home and definitely helped with sleep, so I'm excited to talk about them with you. So I would say that a big part of motherhood is um, dependent on the chemistry between you and your child, and that's not Anything that you can really predict, it's something that's completely out of our hands. Yeah, I definitely think it's interesting to think about um, who you are as a parent and child, and like you said, being kind of pulled in two directions. Um, but I'm also really interested in, as I said before, the um, changing dynamic of a relationship as a child grows up. For, you know, the type of things that teenagers do, like staying out late. Um, she had a steady boyfriend, which was good, so we didn't have to worry about that. Um, uh, I let my wife talk. To listen to them, because I, he has this really persuasive way of um, just saying like little things that will draw me in and make me want to call him and he's always done this I mean in the past
the kind of friends they make, the environment that they're in. You just don't know. So, I hope this has been a good talk. I'm kind of realizing that my belief system is just completely different from theirs and 